else between the two of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so without those three, there is really no path. <laughs> Um, because if there is no freedom, you're going to rebel against the other person's influence. If there's no equality, then you're also not going to feel safe mm -hmm. uh, connecting to the other uh, to the other person mm -hmm. because they may overpower you, right? Or they may become dependent on you. There has to be a trust. So, yes, for there to be a harmonious relationship, a good connection between you and the other, mm -hmm. and ultimately, and this is a more um, yeah, purely bu Buddhistic thing. They say there should be compassion, there should be the desire to, um, in a way, liberate the other person's spirit from lower energies or to get them to deal, at least help them to deal with whatever is troubling them. And if there is not this intention of liberating the other person, then it is not a spiritual path or a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And I find these four pillars a very useful tool in a way, a benchmark to say, like, should a person be following the spiritual tradition or not? Mm -hmm. But often within religions, we find that all four, um, yeah, uh, teachings are within most of the of the world religions. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this, in a way, creates a broad appeal. But everybody, therefore, has their own brand of Christianity or Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism. Mm -hmm. or shamanism for, for that matter. Right. So, because these are the natures of our souls, and our souls are born into different cultures where there is maybe a Christian or Buddhist or Islamic or uh, shamanic uh, tradition, and they try to yeah, follow their own spiritual path within the culture they're born in. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so you should really not say like, I'm a Christian or I'm I believe in Islam, mm -hmm. but you should say like what elements of Islam, of Christianity, or shamanism are part of my individual path. Yeah. So you could be those things, but uh, you, you can identify with them, but you don't necessarily like like yeah, identify with um, Russian Orthodox religion. But then there's some some parts of it that I value and. And you know, teachings of Jesus. I mean, as you said, he was beyond any hierarchy. He was really a great being of light and just amazing. But then there are things that were man-made, uh, written in the Bible that I, I reject because I don't believe in their truth. Um, but I think, in terms of uh, again, if we talk about the mystery schools, they talk as if all four of those equality, freedom, love, and compassion are are there. Um, but I was just gonna say. Um, before you just listen to the sales pitch, mm -hmm. go and before you commit, before you initiate or do anything, go and, and do some investigating because as I told you just now, they keep, can be talking about freedom and yet they be like, well, but I have to submit to the hierarchy. So there's an inherent conflict there yes. that maybe they do say freedom because it's an attractive, and maybe they do see it as a sort of freedom. Mm -hmm but it may be not the kind of freedom you may have in mind. You know, what, what, what often happens if, um, if a path is not really pure is it's that it, it's kind of a, um, it's an, it's, it's kind of a, a narrowing, like, like a, it will take us to a point. So mm -hmm. you, uh, you get to higher levels, mm -hmm. higher awareness, but instead of like liberating you or broadening you and giving you more freedom, uh, you gain mastery over one very specific aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but could that be enough for this lifetime? I mean, you're given yes, many lifetimes for be. a reason. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's not necessarily uh, a bad thing. Okay. Uh, one of the things which which often also helps to uh, discern what what people generally call light or, or dark traditions. Um, within the light tradition, it is usually you have to pay a lot up front. So. You, you get into the tradition and you're expected to change your diet, to mm -hmm. do your exercises, to meditate, and mm -hmm. uh, only after you've already invested a lot in it, then you start to get to see results. Mm -hmm. And basically this is, uh, the light tradition is more of a, of a safe tradition where you, when you're ready for the next step, you almost automatically take the next step. Okay. Uh, because yeah. Yeah, that, that exercise doesn't give you anything new anymore. You've exhausted that exercise, so you go to a higher level, higher mm -hmm. level. And mm -hmm. Slowly you build up your foundations like a pyramid. Right. If you look at the so-called dark traditions, 
often there is little investment up front, so it's more like building a pillar. You just stack the stones on top of each other, you reach a very high level very quickly, but it's kind of unstable. It can topple over, it can fall over. So then at the end, if you've reached a high level, you have to invest a lot to either keep you there or to start the foundation, building the foundation afterwards, so you won't collapse. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a choice, like do you want to invest in the beginning or do you want to in a way do it like a credit card, I'll get it now and I'll pay the debt later. But ultimately the amount of effort, time, energy you invest to really stabilize yourself on a certain level is always the same. Well, but I mean, um, I think the attraction of, of the, that pad, the, the, the last pad that you mentioned is they, they tell you, oh, but there's all this power and strength and, and light that's going to it's funny because everybody uses the word light, nobody uses the word dark, even if they are dark, I guess. But, um, because that would probably put people off. But um, if they say, oh, you know, you can have access to all this light and you don't really have to worry about it anymore because all those, the hundreds and thousands of years of, of, of knowledge and tradition and secret practices and energy and whatever are supporting you. So you don't really have to. Um, but what you're saying is, a time always comes when it catches up with you and you have to pay, pay the bill, so to speak. Yes. Yeah, it always does, because um, one thing that many people don't understand about the spiritual world is that all these uh, beings, gods, goddesses, angels, they have their own, uh, their own mission, their own purpose. They want mm -hmm. to grow and to develop themselves. And uh, to be able to grow and to develop themselves, they have to manifest. Because through the manifestation, through the learning how to deal with problems, with obstacles, they learn. Mm -hmm. So there's a very strong desire from every power to, in a way, manifest, to help, if you want to put it that yeah. way. But in a way, they... Interfere, really. <laughs> they're interfering, yeah. but they're in a way manifesting themselves, but yeah. they, can't, they are not allowed to manifest themselves unless either they've been granted the authority mm -hmm. to act on a certain level of consciousness, mm -hmm. or we give them the authority. So we invite them, you can come into my life and yeah, interact with me on that level. Mm -hmm. So there's never a, a, a lack of, of help. There's always a superfluous amount of help. Um, the important thing to, to see is that in a way by helping us, they're also helping themselves. So right. there's always a self-serving aspect within, within every, every flow. Uh, there's also a sacrificial aspect. Mm -hmm. Because for a being which already exists on a higher level to descend to our levels, to deal with our level of problems, is in a way inconvenient. It's not nice, they prefer yeah. to be on higher levels, but they are in a way sacrificing themselves by coming down to us and helping us. So they expect some sort of payback? No, yeah, well. because, because the experience themselves uh, itself is also helping them. So it's in a way a sacrifice they're making, a kind of movement they're in. Mm -hmm. And if we want to, to work with spiritual beings, we have to have the same type of movement. We have to be in the same type of flow. Mm -hmm. So we have to say like, okay, I want to grow spiritually, therefore I have to act spiritually. Mm -hmm. And to be able to act spiritually, um, there needs to be an object for me to act spiritually upon. So mm -hmm. I need an animal, a plant, a stone, a person to heal, to talk to, to teach, mm -hmm. and by doing so, I grow, and mm -hmm. by doing so, hopefully they will yeah, benefit from okay. it. And there's always uh, a little bit of a, of a shadow area, mm -hmm. because am I, in a way, doing this because I want to grow? Am I telling you this on the video mm -hmm. because I want to be a teach, teaching and thereby, by expressing my knowledge, thinking about it and developing my teaching skills? Mm -hmm. Or am I doing this because, yeah, it is your need that, yeah, you have this knowledge, you need this to progress, and am I sacrificing my time and energy? But you're both doing both. You're doing this. You're doing both. both. But doing it's, both. It's, a very, uh, it's a very tricky balance, and you have to judge, in a way, every power which is helping you to mm -hmm. see, like, is it, in a way, controlling me? Is it mm -hmm. controlling my life? Is, mm -hmm. Am I becoming dependent on it? Mm -hmm. Or is it, at the crucial times, stepping back? Mm -hmm. Because, the, the, as I said, like our own minds and our own bodies, they want to have a certain pleasant state of stability. Mm -hmm. And if this force is saying like, okay, I'm helping you, I'm putting you in this really very high, stable, blissful state, mm -hmm. um, then in a way you are not progressing. Mm 
but the power itself is progressing because it is acting upon you, but it is not serving your spirit. Right. It is just serving your body and your ego and your mind. But it does feel like it's serving your spirit. I mean, it, it feels, feels great. It feels great, but ultimately you're, you're being drugged into, into a stupor, into a bliss, mm -hmm. which is not helping your spirit. And mm -hmm. if the, the, the power you're working with is truly beneficial, right. then it will say like, gosh, you need to experience some pain now, or some hardship, or some challenges. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step back, I'm not going to help you, because you need to learn, you need to develop your own strength. So how, in a way, it, it's, it's kind of a paradox, because we think like, if we're in trouble, if the, the force which helps us to get out of trouble, that's our friend, but mm -hmm. often that's, actually our enemy, <laughs> so, so spiritually speaking. So if we're yeah. very comfortable and happy, yeah, or kept that way, then we're actually being drugged into not progressing spiritually. <laughs> it's, a very, it's, it's a very Russian way of, uh, we have this philosophy back home in Russia that it says, you know, if, if something is, feels too good, there's some sort of catch, there's always something, you always have to look for some suffering, always look for suffering, <laughs> because the suffering is the key. Yeah. But I guess that a very good lesson from what you said is, Whenever something sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true, and n never ex expect that you can shortcut any, I mean, even those, the, the, as you said, the traditions, the angelic traditions that offer faster ways and easy, seemingly easier ways, um, perhaps, you know, it's like, the, it's like with Faust, you know, you don't really yes. know uh, the price may be too high, I mean, just be prepared to know that there's going to be a price. Yeah. There's always a price, right? Yes, generally t the, the way to, 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 yeah, to discern beneficial from non-beneficial yeah. forces is also that beneficial forces tend to, um, because they, they really value you also your own spiritual progress, mm -hmm. they tend to be minimalistic. They will tell you the minimum of what you need to, to make the next step. They will give you the minimum of energy you need to make the next step. Mm -hmm. uh, when you feel there is a certain abundance or easiness uh, to it that generally means that yeah the powers are in a way uh, trying to get you into a position where you're content and then you acquiesce with whatever they want or they desire it's a little bit like like some governments are like this as well mm -hmm. so they in a way take control over your life we take care of your health care of your education or whatever and you yourself become very passive like mm -hmm. you eat yeah, what they think is good for you to eat, you learn mm -hmm. what they think is good for you to learn, but then you're no longer following your own path, you're following the path they prescribe to you. Okay. Which can be a very nice path, it can, you can learn things along the path, but they're not the things your spirit is in, intent on learning. Mm -hmm. And then you become part of their machine or their mission, and they're growing and you're not. Okay, well, I mean, I guess, but again, it's, it's a valid choice for a lot of people. Maybe they, maybe they tend to, maybe they believe into what the hierarchy or the power believes so much that they're willing to give themselves away to it. I mean, it's just yeah. a choice. I, it's more about, you know what you're getting into. Yes, yeah, yes, but indeed in very much the, the, like most people are not spiritually aware or even making choices spiritually, so that basically means that their spirit is not the, par the power which is in control. Mm -hmm. It's basically the body, the emotions, the mind which is in control. Mm -hmm. And those people, uh, because they're very used mm -hmm. to, in a way, following their body, their emotions and their mind, mm -hmm. that often they, when they want to go into spirituality, they mm -hmm. go into these types of movements. Mm -hmm. Because they're actually doing the same thing, but they're just having the illusion that they're growing spiritually or being spiritual. Okay. So the first step on the spiritual path is basically to break yourself free from all your patterns. Right. So to rid yourself of the habits of your body, of your emotions, of your mind, and then your spirit can really break through, and then you go into a very different type of spiritual development, which is true spiritual development, where your spirit seeks out the challenges, and in a way has to fight, uh, or fight, I mean also in a learning way, against all the pressures which are coming from society, all the um, temptations which are in a way put in front of it. Yeah. And the first step, the first challenge on the spiritual path is usually temptation. Mm -hmm. So instead of growing spiritually, instead of going through all these exercises, all these efforts, why don't you take the easy road? Like, 
I don't know, do a workshop, get the healing, uh, <laughs> yeah. do it in a more passive way. Yeah. Uh, and you can have all the benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is usually the first barrier you have to take to really get your spirit involved. The second yeah. barrier is your aversions. It's basically going to, to challenge you, like, okay, um, because your spirit is going to look for things which will stimulate you, which will unbalance you. Mm -hmm. And if you have an aversion like, well, I don't like drama, or I don't like heartbreak, or I don't like this, mm -hmm. or that, or violence, then you're in a way stifling your own spiritual growth. So you have to be without attachment, but also without um, loathing, without mm -hmm. re repulsion for your spirit to be able to guide you, really. Okay. And then the third step is basically to be able to deal with, with the influence. Because even if you yourself don't make those choices anymore, those choices are made in society and mm -hmm. the people around you are following a certain paths and they try to get you to come along with them yeah. because they think what they're doing is right. Yeah. So then you get dragged along into sometimes even a very spiritual seeming movement or flow. Um, but yeah, it's not the path your spirit wants to, wants to follow and only after it has mastered these three challenges mm -hmm. and also has to has learned how to deal with um, the fallout of those choices because you are going to go into more challenging situations yeah. and you're going to get damaged and you have to learn how to heal yourself or how to receive healing mm -hmm. or how to from your surroundings yourself. or how to protect yourself. Yeah. And after these four stages are completed, that's when really your spiritual journey really begins. You said three stages. Is there a fourth one? Uh, uh, so the, the first stage is learning to deal with temptation. Temptation, aversions. And then aversions is the second sh stage. Yep. The third stage is dealing with influence. influence. And the fourth? fourth stage is uh, dealing with self-protection uh, and healing yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's uh, fun. Yeah. And only then are you able to make real progress. Yeah. Wow, this is yeah. excellent. I think this is uh, enough for now. No, this is an excellent... Yeah. Um, I hope yeah. others will benefit from this. I hope so too. You, thank you for being yeah. inspired to do this for me and for everybody else. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for inspiring me. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs>